Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show this Wednesday. Uh, glad to have you guys here. Uh, here's the thing. It's uh, October 30th, 2024. It's a Wednesday, and uh, there's been some alarming development. That's what, uh, alarming developments. That's why I'm doing a show here on Wednesday. And what is this alarming development? Oh, I'm going to get right in there and talk about it. About a week or two ago, uh, Putin gave a warning. And, you know, we're living in a time when, when something can happen a week or two, you know, just a week or two difference. And everybody forgets about it. So we're so into this society, into this news stories can fade into oblivion in like two days. People forget. But I don't forget. I was watching this when it happened a few days ago. Or maybe a week or two ago. Well, I think it was about two weeks ago. Uh, and Putin was warning of the risk to war over Ukraine and the use of their long-range missiles inside Russia. And, you know, there's a reason for this. Uh, the United States has given U Ukraine uh, these missiles, very potent missiles. And so has the United Kingdom. Uh, I think the ones from the United Kingdom are called Storm Shadow. Uh, so has France. Uh, I can't remember what the name of the French one, the equivalent of the Storm Shadow is. France give Ukraine. And so Ukraine's got all these weapons. And initially they said, hey, you know what? How do I pause that page? Initially they said, you know what? when they first gave Ukraine these weapons, we're not going to let you use these weapons on Moscow because it could do tremendous damage inside Russia. These, these are super weapons. Uh, and so Ukraine was trying to get permission to use these long-range missiles and do a major attack inside Russia. But they said, hold on a minute. This might cause World War III, especially when Putin warned. He said... NATO risks war over Ukraine long-range missiles. Now, this has come from NBC News, just a few days old, you know. Let me see exactly when. It was September 13th, 2024. Uh, so it's a little bit, it's getting a little bit long in the tooth, this news story. But like I say, they forget real quick, you know. It says, Vladimir Putin has warned that Russia would be at war with the United States now, this is from NBC News. If the Allies lift restrictions on Ukraine's use of long-range Western weapons, Putin's vow to follow such a move with appropriate decisions was his latest and perhaps most dramatic, drastic attempt to draw red lines over NATO members backing for Kiev. Uh... But they also said that the Russians also have changed their nuclear doctrine to accommodate this. And that's already been done. Okay? So what's alarming to me is not so much this, because this has been around for a while, this, this whole thing about the, the risk of, of war over Ukraine with war between the United States and Russia if Ukraine uses these long-range missiles. And the reason why is it's pretty simple. Because can you imagine if they attacked Moscow and St. Petersburg with these long-range missiles and did tremendous damage inside Russia? Which is what these missiles are designed to do. And they're, they're expensive and they're very hard to stop. Uh, so let's look at what's just happened. This raised alarm bells with me. It says, no... New, no new limits on Ukraine's use of U.S. arms if North Korea joins Russian fight, Pentagon says. Now, this is new. What isn't new is this warning over the use of these long-range missiles. That's not new. That's, that's been around for a few weeks. But what is new is North Korea has joined the war. They've sent 10,000 troops to Russia, which are training, and they're moving them into into in, into Ukraine. And the troops in, in Ukraine, the Russian troops, have been lately have been slowly advancing. Uh, 
And this is what's new. No new limits on Ukraine's use of U.S. arms. In other words, these long-range missiles. If North Korea joins Russian fight, the Pentagon says. It says NATO confirms North Korean troops in Russia's Kursk region. Uh, Pentagon estimates 10,000 North Korean troops deployed to eastern Russia. Uh, it says the U.S. will not impose new limits on Ukraine's use of American weapons if North Korea joins the Russian war, the Pentagon said on Monday. As NATO said, North Korea's military units have been deployed in the Kursk region in Russia. So, where does this leave us? Well, if they give the permission to Ukraine to use these long-range we weapon systems and be able to bombard Russia with them. Uh, then Vladimir Zelensky, the leader of Ukraine, then has the power because the United States has given him the power. In other words, they've said, okay, here, 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 here you go. We're mad at Russia because Russia is sending troops, or you, not, not their troops, but North Korean troops in the Ukraine. Let's just say they do that, right? And I'm not sure they've actually done that yet. They've been deployed into Russia, these 10,000 troops, but have they actually crossed the border into Ukraine? It says Pentagon estimates 10,000 North Korean troops deployed in eastern Russia. Okay. Then the Pentagon, if they deploy them in Ukraine, has said, okay, we're going to give Zelensky the go. Green light. Green light for Zelensky. So then it, then they've passed the baton to Zelensky. Now, he's been in basically his country, Ukraine, has been in World War III for the last several years. Okay? He wants, Zelensky would like to see Russia gone gone as in wiped off the map that's what let's just face it that's what he'd like to see um russia would like to see ukraine pounded the dust and and them and them in control of ukraine that's what they'd like to see you know so these are the things they'd like to see but now you now Zelensky would have the green light then the decision is his what strategic targets and stuff that he would pick inside russia um now, what's going through his mind? Zelensky, I mean. We don't know. I don't know what's going through his mind. But I can only try to think, what if I was in his position? You know? <laughs> then you can get a, a better idea, well, sort of an idea, of what this, how this thing might play out. And you got to say to yourself, hey, you know what? What if Ukraine then, if Ukraine's then has got the button, in other words, basically, I guess it's like giving the giving them the power and letting them do what they're gonna do, you know. And if they were to put a big attack inside Russia, let's just follow this for a minute. Let's say they did an enormous attack inside Russia with U.S. made weapons. Then the next stage is: Would Putin make good on his promises, or not promises, but I guess a vow? He said here. Uh, let me take a look again. What it says here. Putin's vow, it says vow, to follow such a move with appropriate decisions. But he's also said, it says Vladimir Putin has warned that Russia would be at war with the United States if the Allies lift the restrictions on Ukraine's use of long-range weapons. That's what it says right there in NBC News. But we didn't think that that would happen there a couple weeks ago when they printed this article. Now, it's looking an awful lot more likely that Ukraine's going to get this permission. Because I tend to think that they're not training those North Korean troops not to send them into the battlefield. That's just what I think. And then the next step from that is Ukraine getting the permission or the green light. And then the next step from that is what Vladimir Zelensky decides to do with that green light permission. How big, how big a bite is he going to take? into Russia. And then the next step after that would be 
Putin's vow here. It says to follow such a move with appropriate decisions, whatever that means, because the red lines would have been crossed. So it's kind of like what we're doing here is one domino falls and it knocks over a bigger domino, which knocks over a bigger domino, which knocks over a bigger domino yet in this escalatory move. And, and I'm very concerned here now at this point because, well, you guys understand uh, what's going on with that. But I wanted to do a show today because a lot of you might not know what's really going on with this situation, and I tried to explain it the best I could. I think I did a pretty good job. Now, it says latest development in the Middle East. We're switching now from, from Ukraine to the Middle East. And it says latest development in the Middle East conflict could lead to World War III. It says Iran launched over 180 ballistic missiles at Israel in a dramatic escalation of violence. It's gripped the Middle East for days with experts fearing World War III. So we got two wars going that could es either one could escalate out of control. Now, I was watching a video last night on, on Tic Tac, Tic Tac. Tic Tac, whatever. Well, I don't know if it was Tic Tac, actually. It might have been YouTube Shorts or whatever. You know, those videos they play on their phone. You know, the ones that are like eating... They're like eating uh, potato chips. You can't just eat one. You watch one of the videos and you flick to the next one, flick to the next one. The next thing you know, you've lost 15 minutes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, I was watching that. And they had these airplanes doing dogfights. And I said, what's that? And it said that it was... Uh, it was a, uh, what it was, was some sort of a Russian bomber or something, and it was straying out of its airspace or straying near some other airspace, and, and they were, uh, a fighter jet was whizzing by it, you know, I think it was a Canadian fighter jet, an F-18, uh, whizzing by it, and it almost wing, almost touched the other aircraft and stuff, and I got thinking to myself, oh my gosh, you know, here we got two superpowers, basically, Practically doing dogfights in midair out there, you know. And this has been going on a while. There's been a number of these occasions where on the sea, too, you know, like down around the Philippines, you might have a Philippine ship and a Chinese ship and uh, both of them are ramming one another and stuff. This has been going on lately. More and more it's been going on. And you know how things could spiral out of control if, say... Say the wingtip of one of these airplanes touches the wingtip of one of these other airplanes and then both of them crash, you know? And the next thing you know, bullets are flying. The next thing you know, the war's on. It's a war, then. All-out war. World War Three. And the thing about World War Three is it has the potential when the superpowers actually clash, and if they do clash, it has the potential to escalate out of control rather rapidly. Uh... Warfare now could, I know that this thing with Israel and Iran has been doing this tit for tat. And and I know that it's been dragging out over there and Ukraine and everything else. But when all out war really starts in this modern technical theater of war, where you just have to basically push a button. It could escalate out of control awful quick. And a lot of people don't know how close we're getting on multiple fronts to something devastatingly bad. Uh, now, this uh, this comes from Wikipedia, and it's nu it says nuclear weapons in Israel. It says the state of Israel is widely believed to possess nuclear weapons, but it doesn't say confirmed. It says widely believed. They estimate Israel's stockpile range is between 90 and 400. Well, you know... I'm going to tell you what, if it's toward the top end of that figure, they would have more than China. <laughs> Small country, powerful arsenal. Now, not, not, now well, let's talk about North Korea. Well, I started doing my show, you know, many, many years ago. And I talked about North Korea's nuclear weapon arsenal. And they under, they've always been underestimating North Korea's nuclear arsenal, as far as I'm concerned. They've been building them, and they can build them quick. Let's take a look here. Uh, 
Mm, this thing is there. This is. Uh, how am I gonna get this in the picture here? Uh, it's this, uh, this right here, uh, just above my head. You see Kim Jong Un? Kim Jong Kim Jong Un? Or uh, I think I'm pronouncing the name right. Kim. I'll call him Kim. You see the thing he's pointing at? Looks like a giant peanut, giant white peanut. And he's almost got his fingers on it, just above my head. That thing right there is a ther what's called a thermonuclear weapon. See, there's different kinds of nuclear weapons. You know, there's atomic bombs, and then there's hydrogen bombs. And hydrogen bombs are called thermonuclear weapons. And they're much more powerful, generally in the order of a thousand times more powerful than the, uh, than the atomic bombs. That thing isn't very big. It could... It could, you could fit three or four. You could probably fit four of them in the back of a pickup truck. That's how small they are. You got to be amazed. And this, this picture's from many years ago. This picture's probably from maybe six or seven, six years ago, maybe five years ago. It's from quite a while ago. This picture's not new. And it's of the North Korean built. And it yields about, I think it yields 250 kilotons, which... You have to understand that uh, the bomb they dropped on Hiroshima in Japan was only, I think, 12 kiloton. And this thing's 270. <laughs> but what's novel about it is it's so small. So small, so small. You know, I mean, it's no not much bigger than a dumbbell. You know, I mean, it's... it's uh, one of these weightlifters could pick it up on his shoulder and go walking out of the gym with it. You know, I mean, it's not a big weapon at all. And they've been mass producing these sons of a guns for the last years, number of years, for, for years now. And do you know how they can work? They work. They're workers. North Koreans are workers. They're hard workers. And they got factories producing these things, and they've been popping them out. And so they, the estimates, you know, I mean... They they say okay North Koreans nuclear program it says uh, what to know about North Korean's nuclear program uh, is North Korea building nuclear weapons question mark see we're so stupid over here. they've been building them for years they've been stockpiling them up like crazy they've been having their big parades and displaying these these big ICBMs that are mobile launchers where they can move them anywhere in the country they want to move them and launch in a few seconds. I'm thinking to myself, hey, you know, and I mean, this is just my opinion. They might get mad at me for saying this, but I'm thinking North Korea's probably got hundreds of them, too. But how many do they estimate that North Korea's got, you know? Uh, see, it says here, this, this, and they got a little picture again of this bomb that I just talked about. It says 250 kilotons of TNT. They detonated it in 2017. So they've been making these since 2017, these peanut bombs. So they've had, uh, what, seven years they've been popping them out of their factory. I don't know. What can they pop out? Maybe three or four a month? I don't know. Ten a month? I don't know. Uh, North Koreans are hard workers, like I say, you know. And... Uh, the thing is, they got a delivery system for them. North Koreans, years ago, put a satellite into space. It was years ago, and, and they've done it, I think, several times. They've put satellites into space. They've got the ICBMs to carry those things all the way over here to America. You know, so don't underestimate North Korea's nuclear potential. I think they say it's like, they, what do they say? It's got like 40 bombs or something, but I think it's hundreds. they probably got hundreds. So North Korea and Israel, both, you know, I mean, you got to say to yourself, you got to start to look at these other countries like Pakistan's pack of nukes, uh, India's pack of nukes. People don't talk about it much. The, these other countries that are smaller countries that are pack of nukes. And what about Iran? Is Iran loaded with nukes? Maybe they're just keeping it quiet. Uh, I've heard that... Several years ago, they said Iran's just weeks away from having a nuclear weapon. And that was like way back when they were doing the nuclear treaties and stuff. Back during the 
back during the Trump administration, the previous Trump administration. You know, I mean, years have been going by. What are they doing? Are they twiddling their thumbs if they don't have them, or are they just keeping it quiet? You know, so we got all these third-player countries out there who have nuclear weapons who, who could launch this war, and it's not necessarily meaning that the superpowers would launch the war. But would the superpowers get quickly involved? In, in, because it's a very dangerous world we live in right now. But this is very concerning to me, the fact that that the it's already been said that nu Russia's nuclear doctrine's already been changed. And now we saying that they're going to say no new limits on Ukraine's use of U.S. arms if North Korea joins Russia's the Russia's fight, the Pentagon says. That's concerning. In fact, during the whole duration of this war, a number of concerning things have happened. But this has probably got me the most concerned of all, all the stuff that's happened in the, this whole thing since 2020. As far as the war front's concerned, this is what's got me the most concerned is that the Russian nuclear doctrine's been changed and uh, Russia's already said, hey, you know what? Uh, Putin is, it says here very clearly, Putin, Vladimir Putin has already warned that Russia would be at war with the United States if it's, and its allies if they list restrictions on Ukraine's use of long-range Western weapons. So... Got to factor that all this stuff in, and anyway, guys, thank you for listening. You guys have a great day, and we'll catch you guys in the next show, probably on Sunday. Bye bye.